Welcome to the Grants Portal How-To Videos, presented by FEMA's Public Assistance Training Section. This video will cover the process for an applicant or a recipient to submit an appeal in Grants Portal. The scope of this video is limited to how to submit an appeal request in Grants Portal for FEMA consideration. Other resources are available to provide greater detail about the determination memo and the appeals process overall. The appeals process will be undergoing some changes starting in 2022. Any incident declared on or after January 1, 2022 will require appeals to be submitted using the Appeal Request functionality in Grants Portal. For any incident in Grants Portal declared prior to that date, applicants and recipients will have the option to submit the appeals in Grants Portal using the Appeal Request functionality or to submit their requests to the region as hard copies. The recipient is the state, tribe, or territory that receives and administers the Public Assistance Federal Award. They apply directly to FEMA. The applicant is a state, local, tribal, or territorial government or eligible private nonprofit entity that may request and receive subawards under a recipient's award. You may also hear the term subrecipient. That refers to an applicant or their subordinate organization after funding has been obligated. Grants Portal is the online grant platform used by recipients and applicants to manage their PA grant applications. This is what we'll be working in today. The Determination Memo, or DM, is an official memorandum that explains what assistance was denied, the amount that was denied, the basis of the denial, a list of documents that FEMA reviewed, and information about an applicant's rights and procedures to appeal. This can be viewed in Grants Portal, where the applicant and recipient can review it and submit an appeal if needed. An appeal is the applicant's written response to a determination memo. It includes an appeal letter, any necessary supporting documentation, specific funding amounts, and citations to any applicable laws, regulations, or policies that support their claim. Generally, FEMA must determine whether each building block on this eligibility pyramid is eligible, starting at the foundation with the applicant and working up to the top, the cost. The applicant is responsible for demonstrating that each component of the pyramid is eligible by providing documentation to substantiate that eligibility. FEMA may issue a DM based on the applicant's supporting information and documentation provided to FEMA. There are a few phases within the PA grant workflow where a DM may be issued. In phase one, the applicant themselves could be determined to be ineligible for assistance. For example, if they are a private corporation or a private nonprofit that doesn't provide an eligible service. The DM could be issued at the applicant level after review of the Request for Public Assistance, or RPA, the Applicant Impact Survey, or the Exploratory Call. A DM issued at this phase would be viewed under Applicant Event Profile in Grants Portal. In Phase 2 and 3, damages and projects could be found ineligible during the different reviews. Ineligibility here could be related to the facility, the work being performed to repair the facilities back to pre-disaster condition, or the individual costs claimed in the damage or the project. Projects could be found ineligible as a whole or in part. The DM will define which costs are ineligible and FEMA will provide the policies or laws that support their decision. If the applicant disagrees with an ineligibility determination from FEMA, they may submit an appeal. After the determination memo has been officially issued, the applicant will have the option to submit an appeal within 60 days of the date the DM was sent. In an appeal, the applicant should address each component of the DM in the form of an appeal letter and submit all information necessary to support the appeal. The recipient has 120 days total to forward the appeal to the FEMA Regional Administrator or Assistant Administrator starting on the same day as the applicant's 60 days. If the applicant chooses to pursue a second appeal, no new documentation can be added. Be sure to submit all supporting documentation necessary at the first appeal stage. We will now walk through submitting and viewing a first appeal in Grants Portal. First, we will submit an appeal via the Determination Memo page. In the navigation area on the left side of the page, open My Tasks and select Determination Memos. 
This will take you to the My Determination Memos page. Click on the magnifying glass next to the DM that you want to view. Before requesting the appeal, review all the information available on the Determination Memo page. Here, you can see that we are working with a project-level DM. This page will look more or less the same and contain the same types of information for an applicant-level or damage-level DM as well. The Determination Memo can be downloaded from here, and the total cost being denied is shown here. The basis for the DM will be noted under the Eligibility Issue section and the Law Regulation Policy section. Use the Request Appeal button in the upper right corner of the page to begin your appeal. This takes us to the Request First Appeal step. You'll select the applicant point of contact and mailing address from the drop-down menus. You can provide the disputed monetary figure if you know what that value is. In this case, I am including the entire amount of the cost being denied. This value may differ from the amount shown on the determination memo page. For example, if you choose to submit an appeal for only part of the cost being denied. If you do not provide that value and select No, you'll be required to include a comment. Click Upload in the Documents area to upload files. A drop-down menu will appear with options to upload appeal letter or upload supporting documentation. You will not be able to submit the appeal until an appeal letter has been uploaded. The Upload Appeal Letter dialog box will prompt you to choose a file by clicking in the Document field. You can update the file name and add a description here. The category is automatically selected for you. Now that the appeal letter has been uploaded, it is possible to submit the appeal. But before we do that, Let's upload some supporting documentation. When you upload supporting documentation, you'll have the option to drag and drop files into this box or to click in it and navigate to the file the same way you did for the appeal letter. A category will need to be specified for each supporting document uploaded to the appeal. You can add that information using either Specify under the Category column or Edit to the left of the file name. After adding the category, you'll be able to upload the document. You can upload additional documents here until you submit the appeal. You also have the option to remove documents at this step. Once you have everything uploaded, click the Submit button in the upper right corner of the page. You'll be asked to confirm that you want to submit the appeal request. After submitting, you'll come to an Appeal Details page with a blue banner letting you know that the appeal is now pending recipient review. Now that the appeal has been submitted, you'll be able to view the Appeal Details page, but you will not be able to make any additional changes. Another way to locate an applicant-level appeal is through the Applicant Event Profile. From your dashboard, select Applicant Event Profiles from the navigation area under My Organization. You may need to edit the filter to find the applicant event profile you're looking for. By default, the status will be set to active for PA. Use this dropdown to edit the filter. You could set it to all or narrow the search to the applicable status. The status of this applicant event profile is ineligible. Use the Run Query button on the right side of the filter header to apply the filter. Now that I've found the correct profile, I'll click the magnifying glass on the left side of the listing to drill in. The red banner at the top of the page includes a link to view the applicant ineligibility determination and memo. Selecting the link takes us to the relevant section of the page. Here we can view the eligibility issue and download the determination memo to review. To initiate an appeal from here, click the Request Appeal button in the upper right corner of the page. Again, you will select the applicant point of contact and mailing address from these drop-down menus. Since the applicant has not submitted any costs yet, there is no disputed monetary figure to provide. When you select No, you'll be required to enter a comment. Upload the appeal letter and any available supporting documentation and submit the appeal request as before. After the applicant has submitted their appeal, the recipient will review it and submit it to FEMA. As the recipient, you can locate the appeal using the task bell in the upper right corner of the page. This will take you to a list of incomplete tasks. Locate the Review Appeal task in the list and click the Review button. 
you will arrive on the Appeal Details page. Here, you will review the appeal and make any additional changes needed before submitting it to FEMA. In the Law, Regulation, Policy section, there are not currently any cited laws, regulations, or policies. If needed to support the appeal, you could edit this to add that information. There is also a section for Request for Information. If any RFIs have been issued, they would appear here along with any direct responses to the RFI. A grantee recommendation letter is required to submit the appeal to FEMA. In the Documents area, use the Upload button to upload the grantee recommendation letter or supporting documentation. The grantee recommendation letter dialog box mirrors the one used by the applicant to upload the appeal letter. You can use Manage to edit the file name, description, and category of documents that have already been uploaded to the appeal, or to remove documents if needed. Once you've completed your review and attached a recommendation letter, you can submit the appeal to FEMA. The recipient will provide one of three recommendations from this drop-down menu and add a comment if needed. Now that the appeal has been submitted to FEMA, no further changes can be made. To view appeals that have already been submitted, you will navigate to the Applicant's Applicant Event Profile. In the Navigation area on the left side of the page, you can find your organization's Applicant Event Profile below My Organization. As an applicant, you would click here. As a recipient, to find the Applicant Event Profiles for the applicants who are applying under you, navigate to Subrecipient Organizations. Applicant Event Profiles for each of your applicants or subrecipients will be accessible here. This is the Subrecipient Applicant Event Profiles page. For applicants, the Applicant Event Profiles page will look the same as this. I've already applied a search term to narrow my list of applicants. Click to drill into the relevant Applicant Event Profile. This page will look more or less the same whether you're viewing it as a recipient or an applicant. Scroll down to near the bottom of the page to find the Appeals section. All appeals associated with this Applicant Event Profile will be listed here. Clicking the magnifying glass will take you to the Appeal Details page. After the applicant has submitted their appeal, the recipient will review it before submitting it to FEMA. Upon receipt of the appeal, FEMA reviews the appeal content and uses the administrative record and the laws, regulations, and policies applicable to the respective incident to analyze the appeal. FEMA may request additional information via an RFI, or Request for Information, to adequately adjudicate the appeal, or it may make its decision based on the documentation and information provided at the time of the appeal submission. Within 90 days of receiving the appeal, FEMA will take one of the following three actions. 1. FEMA may request additional information via the RFI. This request will specify the date by which FEMA must receive the information usually 30 days from issuance of the request. Within 90 days of receiving the required information, or within 90 days of the expiration of the deadline to respond, FEMA will provide its appeal decision simultaneously to the recipient and applicant. 2. FEMA may submit the appeal to an independent expert or independent experts for technical review and recommendations. Within 90 days of receiving the technical review recommendations, FEMA will provide its appeal decision simultaneously to the recipient and the applicant. Or, 3. FEMA will provide its written decision simultaneously to the recipient and applicant in Grants Portal. For more information, please see the Public Assistance Program and Policy Guide and the Public Assistance Appeals Database. If you are working with any documents used for a FEMA grant, you are responsible for safeguarding Personally Identifiable Information, or PII. PII refers to anything that can be used to directly or indirectly identify an individual. Some examples of PII are names, addresses, social security numbers, and financial account information. This type of information must not be uploaded into Grants Portal or Grants Manager. To report corruption, waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, and or misconduct, contact the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General by phone at 
323-8603 or via the website or mailing address listed on the screen now. Procurement requirements are among the most complicated parts of the PA grant process, and noncompliance can result in deobligation of funding. Please make sure that you are following FEMA's procurement guidance for recipients and subrecipients. Federal requirements for procurement and contracting are described in 2 CFR Part 200. The Procurement Disaster Assistance Team, or PDAT, offers some training and tools on their website, www.fema.com gov slash grants slash procurement. For technical assistance with Grants Portal or Grants Manager, you can call the PA Grants Portal Grants Manager hotline at 866-337-8448. National hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. In Puerto Rico, hours are 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Atlantic, Monday through Friday. The hotline can also be reached by email at fema-recovery-pa-grants at fema.dhs.gov. We have many other recorded webinars and tutorial videos available on our YouTube channel. You can find them by searching for FEMA Grants Portal on YouTube or by navigating to the Support Center in Grants Portal or Grants Manager.